this mess guys how did it come this far what did i do look i mean look at this look at all this mess i have made not usually it doesn't look like this on my videos but man i have had some trouble with this amiga 2000 now this is an amiga 2000 that i just got in and then um, i should turn it on and uh, take a look at it for the first time but before that i just wanted to make sure that this psu was fine and gave quality power before i wanted to give this one uh, yeah power <laughs> so let's just uh, go a little back in this video and see uh, why everything looks like this <laughs> okay how did it all start <laughs> so i took off this psu the amiga 2000 just got it home i took this one off to make an inspection on top is everything is is, is everything all right something burned on the bottom is something burned something shorted shorted how does the fuse look how does the top of these uh, don't don't touch these <laughs> these caps look and all that and i'm not an expert i started my amiga love amiga passion amiga videos last year so i'm not an expert never said that i'm learning every day <laughs> now usually i don't film something like this because in the beginning of all this last year, actually some other YouTubers wrote to me, do not make it too advanced, nothing with high voltage written on it. Because if some poor other guy tries it and something goes wrong, that's, that's not good. <laughs> so keep it simple. And I always keep my videos simple because I also enjoy watching simple videos. They're, they're just easy to digest, guys. But I'm showing this now. Don't do something like this if you don't know what you're doing, okay? Promise me that. Just look here and enjoy. If you have trouble with your PSU, this is high voltage stuff, guys. This shit can kill you. If you have trouble with it, just pay another guy that knows what he's doing to do stuff like this. Now, Earlier this year, I made two other Amiga 2000 videos. On those Amiga 2000 videos, I could just turn on this power supply. But these Commodore Amigas, a a a Commodore, they used different stuff. What they could get cheapest and all that. And this one, as you can see, we got a switching power supply model PSM 2000 and it gives plus 5 plus 12 minus 5 minus 12 okay so usually when I have something like this or my Amiga 4000s then before I connect anything I check out the 5 volt 12 volt and all that I make sure that the 5 volt is 5 and not 6 or 7.3 or something like that so what i did with this one <laughs> this one yeah i turned it on as i turned it on something odd happened guys now if you look at this we have two cables here a red one and a black one these two cables are 12 volt uh, power supplies that 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 supplies this fan now this board is built in this uh, cabinet case so um i just want to show you what happened when i turned this one on i don't want to solder these on again for the video so i just took a brand new external fan here that I just connected to these Molex collectors and that one also uses 12 volts, okay? So this is what happened when I turned around for the first time. Now again, do not do something like this at home. Okay, I'm gonna pause this so you can listen to it. Okay, three, two, one. Here we have 240 volts. It will kill me, so I'm, I'm careful. Before I power it on, 
I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put this in here now on these here we go we have um, uh, 5 volt and 12 volt here guys okay then we're gonna get this one can you yes you can work that all right well this is what happened when I just turned it on like this at the voltage that should be five volts or let me see yeah that should be five volts guys no let me see what color oh it's orange that's that's the 12 this one should give us 12 volts look at this look at the fan and i was like what i have never seen nothing like this before and if you listen some kind of relay ticks, clicks and on, off, on and off. There we go. No, don't do something like this. I have loose cables here. I have this ground here that can touch something. Be really careful. <laughs> okay. Now, this one just simulates the fan over here. I was just, what's going on? Let's get some music. I was like, what's going on, man? Um... <laughs> never seen nothing like this and I couldn't figure it out so I actually found I took another uh, power supply AT power supply with on and off switch and all that and I was actually thinking about replacing everything I, I was thinking about recapping maybe that could help but yeah i wasn't sure guys so <clears throat> on commodore amiga i asked uh, on on the facebook forum there's a guy called peter um, bottom oh, remember the surname but peter something with m <laughs> great guy he has hel helped me another uh, another time before this great great guy with a lot of amiga knowledge and if you like amiga come on in and join commodore amiga on facebook I've been there for a year and I'm telling you only positive attitude positive guys I, I love using that um, Facebook page great great comment on people in there so Rachel Django approved <laughs> okay guys so Peter told me that this one uh, I, I should try to connect a hard disk because it's not connected, this big one is not connected to, to an Amiga 2000, so try that, maybe it will boot up. What I did was, I connected a hard drive. There we go. Now there is some kind of indication that goes back or something like that. So let's give it some power now, guys. Okay, three, two, one, with the hard drive connected. Pause the music. There we go. Okay. Three, two, one, go. So we have this one and this one now. Listen to the hard disk. <laughs> no, that didn't help. So I called one of my friends and he was like, <clears throat> In the beginning, he said, don't connect it to an to Amiga 2000. And I said, no, of course I will not. And then we tried something fun. We just cut uh, all this time. Um, this fan was, of course, connected here. Now this one just simulates this fan, okay? So we talked on the phone with my friend and he said, try to disconnect the fan, disconnect everything. And let's see what's going to happen. So I remove this and I remove that. Okay, nothing is connected now. Nothing at all. So let's just give it some power. Bam! 12 volts. Isn't that beautiful? And the same goes for the 5 volt channel. No clicking, no nothing, just perfect. All right. Again, when the power's on, do not do something like this. But 
If I then did something stupid like this, look at this, I'm connecting the fan, and bam, it makes errors, it doesn't work. So, I was confused. Okay, <laughs> talking on the phone with my friend, and then he said, man, if nothing is connected, you have quality 12 volt and 5 volt. Oh, uh, oh I, you can also get the minus uh, 5 and 12 on this big connector here. I don't want to move st that much stuff because we have power on right now. <laughs> he said, don't be a crybaby. Connect it to your Amiga 2000 motherboard. Put in the LED light so that it so it can light up if the, if the board the boots up and all that. Uh, just try it for a second. If it doesn't click, then it's all right. But it, if it clicks, then replace it to a um, to a, with, with another PSU. And I was uh, then I just left it alone. And later, I'll pick another song. Two seconds, guys. Yeah. There we go, the Amiga 500 Plus plays in the background. I love my Amiga 500 Plus. So what I did was, um, as you can see over here, <laughs> I took off all the ICs, all the chips, all the custom chips, Fat Agnes, everything off my Amiga 2000. Because if the 5 volts goes up to 7 or something like that, it will just fry all the chips. Now. I don't know if this motherboard works. I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> New Amiga 2000. But what I did was I took everything off. Just to be sure, guys. I don't know because this is odd. <laughs> so I took everything off and um, powered my Amiga 2000 on. Let's go, go ahead and see what happened. All right, the PSU is ready now. We're gonna connect it for the first time and we have to turn the camera so... So you can see this LED that it boots up. We're gonna have the Amiga play in the background. Now, I'm, I mean, from other YouTubers, I'm getting told, don't play music in the background, that's not good. Do it in the editing program and all that talk in a calm voice we're gonna build this computer and all that but i don't care about that i'm doing this because i want to have fun in the background i like to listen to amiga in the background i'm sorry if the quality is bad guys but i like it this way i'm not gonna live on youtube donations no nothing like that i'm just doing this because it's fun and i want to share my experience with you guys so my videos are like this okay I don't go after the YouTube form. <laughs> I just do what I like. Okay, so let's listen to Amiga in the background and let's give this one some power. Now check out this LED, if it blinks or not. Bam! Now we have no fan action because the cables are cut to the fan, but the PSU is open. So for this short amount of time, it's okay. But if you look here, we have the red LED and it doesn't blink. Now, again, I don't know if this Amiga works. So let's just turn it off and wait for a couple of seconds and then put some of these chips on. Um, when you put on these chips, let me, let me move the camera. Okay, when you wanna put on the chips, you just have to Be sure, as you can see on this one, we have this little thingy over here, and we have the same down on the motherboard here. Now, this is the Denise. As we can see here, this is from the 16th week of 1989. Be careful you don't bend the legs, and just carefully, carefully push it in place, guys. This is the poly chip, and this makes the Amazing Amiga tunes, I love them. There we go. This one, 8520. Again, 8520. These are the CIA chips. And they will go up top here in the Amiga 2000. Yeah. 
if you have trouble with the disk drives, something like that, some things don't work, it's just most of the times it's actually some of these they burn, they die. And they're just so easy to replace guys. Okay, again the notch here, up top. Gary, Gary's over here, the notch here and here on the motherboard. Nice. The fat Agnes will got this little chip pointer here, points this way, and you will have a marking on here also somewhere. Yeah. There, not easy to see, but here at the top. Okay, no legs are bent now. Nice. Oh, I have to find my diagram because I don't want to start this first time with the kickstart on. I will find my diagram, guys, and I'll be back. Get wrong found. Let's just take that one out. Now this board had some battery juice here on the CPU socket and I just cleaned it, neutralized it, but I have to replace that socket so I don't think that it will boot up, but let's let's just try it. The nut is here, okay. Because the CPU it came with, not easy to see guys, but look at the first leg here. Can you see it's green? The first one. The uh, second one is just a tad on the top, so other legs are fine, but I, I, I don't wanna use this. I'm trying with a no working one. Oh, nice. Okay, then the last I see is over here. And this one actually controls these Zorro slots. You don't have this one on your Mega 500. The 7521. Nice. Okay, we're ready to give this one power. I will uh, unconnect my Mega 500 and give this one some power now. Okay, guys, all the chips are installed. We're gonna turn it on. <laughs> now, I'm pretty sure it, that, that it won't boot because of the, as you, as you saw earlier, you can see the first leg it's all green now the socket has to be replaced now if it works or not no matter what I will make a part two of this video where the socket has been um, replaced I'm pretty sure there are some dead traces from the socket and over to the to the um, kickstart wrong they, they it's a critical area where the battery has been put also from the first leg over here to these resistors they used to they used to die also because of the battery juice so let's just give this one power now first test i don't use the um, original kickstart 1.3 it came with it, i mean it has clean legs I haven't tested none of the other ICs, no nothing like that, but I'm gonna start up with the diagram. The diagram jumps over some of the initial uh, tests and it will be easier for the Amiga to boot. Now I'm pretty sure 99, I'm 100% sure that it's dead because of the battery juice, but let's just give it some power and see, as you can see, my LCD screen 
says no signal. Let's see if the LED blinks, if it gives a signal or a sync at least. The LED does not blink, that's nice. The screen gets a sync. Now this fan over here, I just put it on there um, because I don't, if, if the CP, PSU makes this ticking thingies as an indicator, uh, not necessary. But as you can see, we only have a black screen. No blinking LED, no nothing. So, yeah, this is at I. First four legs are just dead here. That means they're also dead down there on the on the CPU connector down there. So yeah, this one has to be replaced. But um, yeah, this is the end of part one, guys. <laughs> we just learned this type of PSU. It has to be connected to the motherboard, or it or it just or it just takes as it did <laughs> at the beginning of this video. So I wanna say again, thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. I hope you will hit that subscribe button so we can see each other on part two of this video. Have a great day guys. Retro Django out.